what happens when we change the position of the cable in the beam. The position of the cable within the beam has a significant effect on the stress distribution uh, within the beam. You'll notice on my acrylic model that the pre-stressing tendon here is towards the bottom of the beam. And there's a very logical reason for that, but to understand why, we need to look at some stress diagrams to show the variation of stress across the cross-section. Okay, so let's imagine that we've got a beam which is resting on a couple of supports. And we've got some loading sitting on top of the beam. That will induce tension in the bottom of the beam and compression in the top of the beam. So if we were to take a cut through the beam, we would find that we ended up with a stress distribution which looked something like this. We have compressive stresses in the top of the beam and we have tension stresses in the bottom of the beam. Now we don't like these tension stresses, so what we do is to induce some pre-stress into the beam. So if we put the tendon in the middle of the beam, we will induce a uniform compression across the beam. So we can add the pre-stressing force to the force from the load. And if we make the amount of the compression from the pre-stress the same as the amount of tension, we end up with zero stress there, and we end up with a force at the top here, uh, which is equal to two times the compressive stress C. What we want to do is to maximize the amount of tension that we carry. We can choose to put the pre-stressing force at a different location. And so we do it in such a way that it induces zero stress at the top. And if we put it at the two-thirds of the way down the beam, we find that this stress here is now equal to 2p. So now we can apply the load to the structure, and we find that we can apply twice as much load here as we did before. We end up with a stress distribution which looks like this. So we now have 2C at the top here and 0 at the bottom. This is 2C, this is 2T. The effect is that by choosing to put the pre-stressing cable in the appropriate location, we end up being able to carry twice as much load as we did before. We can see the effect of this on my acrylic model. With the tendon at the bottom position, it's in an ideal position for carrying uh, sagging bending where there's tension uh, induced in the bottom of the beam. And I can put quite a significant load onto this beam before the joints between the segments start to open up. If I turn the beam over, which I can do on my model but I can't do in the real world, the tendon is now towards the top of the beam. And the effect of this is that it's, I, it's not good for carrying bending with tension in the bottom. So I now need to put very tiny forces onto this beam before the beam uh, starts to, the cracks start to open up at the bottom uh, of the beam. And this illustrates the point that engineers need to take account of the loading that they expect to come onto their structure and therefore choose to put the tendon in the appropriate position. What is the ideal position for the cable in a pre-stressed concrete beam? If we have a beam which is supported on two supports at the ends with some load applied in the middle of the beam, we find that the beam sags uh, and we get tensile stresses at the bottom and compressive stresses at the top. And we've already seen that under those circumstances the ideal position for the pre-stressing cable is two-thirds of the way from the top to the bottom of the beam. This is what we call sagging bending for fairly obvious reasons. If, alternatively, we have a beam which is passing over a column uh, and we load it, we say that the beam is in hogging bending because it, uh, it takes the shape of a hog's back, is where the, the phrase comes from. Under these circumstances, we find that we get tensile stresses in the top of the beam and compressive stresses in the bottom. In this situation, we would put the cable one-third of the way from the top down to the bottom. So you can see that the engineers will choose to put the cables in specific locations depending upon the magnitude and direction of the bending to which the beam is being subjected. So how are the cables arranged in multi-span beams? <laughs> 
Well, very often we want to make uh, a bridge which is continuous over many different supports. Uh, and I've got here a beam which is passing over uh, two, three supports to give us two spans. And if I load this beam up, we find that in the middle of the spans, the beam is in sagging bending. And under those circumstances, we'd want to put the cable towards the bottom of the beam. Over the central support, the beam is in hogging bending. And as we've just seen, to efficiently carry the load in those circumstances, the cable wants to be at the top of the beam. So we would adjust the profile of the beam to follow the shape that we want to get, to get the maximum benefit from the pre-stressing cable. So that means that these sorts of structures are almost invariably made from post-tensioned concrete. What happens if we overload a pre-stressed concrete beam? Well, the pre-stressed concrete beam is normally designed so that it remains in compression uh, for the whole time. That means we can cycle the load up and down uh, without any uh, permanent deformation. If we increase the load slightly higher than we, it was designed for, we will start to get some cracks occurring in the concrete. Uh, and if we increase the load further, these cracks will grow. They will move from being micro cracks to being cracks that you can actually see. But even in those circumstances, we should be able to remove the load and the concrete will, the cracks will close up uh, and the, the beam will go back to being fully pre-stressed. Eventually, of course, if we put enough load on the structure, we can make it fail. And that failure will either be by yielding of the steel or by failure of the concrete in compression. But even so, in either circumstance, the failure of the structure will actually be gentle rather than a sudden brittle collapse.